Hey y'all and welcome back to another Wedding Wednesday. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome. Every Wednesday we go over tips, tools, and techniques in order to plan a wedding. In today's episode we are talking about maids and men. Who will your entourage be and some successful tips to select them. So let's get started. First you need to think about personality, accountability, finances, and reliability. These are very, very important factors when you're choosing your maids and men because they are people that you are going to count on on your big day. So choose wisely. Don't try to force the numbers. Don't try to make it even because it doesn't have to be even, y'all. As we learned in my guest list and wedding party video a long time ago, it's probably my fourth or fifth video I recorded, so make sure to check back on that for some tips and techniques. But they don't have to be even. They don't have to be even. Pick people that you know that you can count on. Pick people that you know that are reliable and financially able so they're not going to be adding any additional stress with, I can't afford this, I can't afford that. It is okay to help them out, but you already have this giant budget of a wedding to pay for, so just be transparent about what they're going to need to do. So let's get into it. So first in your selection pool needs to be children or siblings. Siblings of the bride or groom make wonderful choices for best man or maid of honors and children make really great maybe flower girls or ring bearers but they can also make really good best men or even just a groomsman or a bridesmaid. Just make sure that they are responsible and accountable for what they're going to need to do during the wedding planning process. Next choice is going to be your ride or dies. People who you know these are longtime friends, these are people who I know that would be you know, accountable for what they need to be accountable for and responsible and just make sure that they have your best interests in mind. Your ride or die friends are great next choices for your wedding party. Next is going to be longtime friends. So if you have a friend who you've been friends with for since kindergarten, you haven't seen them in a long time, but y'all still stay in contact. You're still involved in each other's lives and supporting each other on your wins and just people who are longtime friends who have proven themselves in the past to be wonderful people in your life. That's another great choice for bridesmaids and groomsmen. Lastly, I would suggest cousins or uncles or aunts that you're very close with. These are great people because yes, they're family. Yes, you know that they can count on them. They're people who you have maybe confided in before. Cousins and uncles and aunts are really great choices, but make good choices and don't just try to pile people on because you're looking for the numbers. One last note on who to choose, it is totally fine to have a groomsmaid or a bridesman. Talk to your fiance, make sure that this is gonna work out for both of y'all, but it is okay to have men on the women's side and women on the groom side if that's something that you and your fiance are okay with, having that combination, but just make sure that you talk to your fiance about it because sometimes fiances have some certain feelings about it but it is okay to have bridesmen as well as groomsmates. Next, let's get into the four traits that I mentioned earlier about how to choose your bridesmaids and your groomsmen. Personality, reliability, accountability, and finances. First is personality. Are they going to mesh well with your bridal party? Are they the kind of people who can put their selfishness aside, get along with different personalities, and aren't going to cause any sort of anger or issues that don't need to be there because they have certain personality traits. So make sure that the personality of the person that you're choosing meshes well with the rest of the wedding party and they're not going to be selfish or make it all about them because it's not all about them. So take a look at their past, see what they've done, in the, you know, are they flaky kind of people? Are they reliable? Just, just take into account the personality of the person you're choosing to be in your wedding party. Next is reliability. Can you count on them for big and small? Are they somebody who's maybe been flaky in the past? Are they somebody that you can count on for help with planning and preparation and follow through throughout your engagement process as well as on your wedding day? Next is financially able. Are they able to come to your wedding? If it's a destination wedding, can they pay for their plane flight? Can they pay for their accommodations? As well as can they just pay for their dress? Can they pay for their accessories, their hair, their makeup? what it's going to take for them to be a bridesmaid. Think about them financially able because you don't want to put any kind of stress on them 
that's going to put them in a bind, not be able to pay their bills, not be able to pay their you know rent or whatever. You want to make sure that they're going to enjoy being a bridesmaid or a groomsman and it's not going to put any kind of stress on their life as well. And if it is too much for them to be part of their wedding party, find something else for them to do. Find another place for this special person in your life to help out. Now hair, nails, accessories, shoes, all that kind of stuff. You can help out a bridesmaid with that as well and you can also help a groomsman with that as well if you would like to maybe pay for their hair and makeup as a gift to the bridesmaids or you know help get their nails done you know pay for their nail appointments or any accessories they're wearing just make sure to be transparent and make sure that these people understand what you are willing to help out with and what is their financial responsibility Lastly, let's talk about availability. Are they available for your big day? Are they available for you? Are they available for phone calls in the middle of the night? Are they available to help make small and large decisions? Are they available to be delegated tasks to? If this person has just started a new job and they have tons of stress in their life and they're like, I don't know if I can make it to the wedding, they're not a good candidate for a bridesmaid or a groomsman. These are type of people that need to prioritize you and prioritize your big day when called upon. So they need to be able to come to pre-planning parties. They need to come and, you know, be able to help set up for the big day. And they need to be there to help you out in whatever way you need to because they're your, they're your tribe. They're your entourage. We really got lucky with our bridal party. The people in our bridal party were just so amazing. They went above and beyond for our wedding day. And they just really, really did a phenomenal job helping us out and really making sure that the day went out without a hitch and everybody was happy and everybody was having a good time. Lastly, think of your budget. Think of what your budget is for gifts, for helping out with bridesmaids and groomsmen attire and needs. If you have five bridesmaids, five groomsmen, and you're providing gifts for them, Whatever the price of one of those gifts is, times it times five, times it times 10. The gifts that you provide are not free. They're anywhere from $15 to $100 if you're doing one of those, will you be my bridesmaids gifts or will you be my groomsmen gifts or thank you for being a bridesmaid or thank you for being a groomsman gifts. Those need to be added into your budget and taken into account because they can really escalate quickly. So if you are helping them with nails, if you are helping them with hair and makeup, those hair and makeup appointments may average you five to seven hundred dollars for all of your women. The accessories that you're giving them may even just be fifty dollars for all of them, but that's still fifty dollars. So now let's get into the good stuff. What to wear. The bridesmaids, they need to match the theme and be a compliment to the bride. The men, they need to be a compliment to the groom and they need to match a theme. Notice I did not say they all needed to match. Notice I didn't say that all of their accessories needed to be the same. They just need to match the theme. What we did, for example, is our groomsmen, they actually matched the groom. They matched them from top to bottom. We gave them a link to buy for suits, and then they just got a white shirt. Maybe they even had one in their own closet. They all had, you know, the clear buttons. And then we gifted them a bow tie as well as socks to wear. So they had their shoes, they had their suits, and we provided the bow ties and the socks. Now for our bridesmaids, what we did was I had my maid of honors, I had two actually matrons of honors because they're both married. I had them in purple. Then I had my bridesmaids, they all wore an off shade of brown. It was like a cocoa, a chocolate, a caramel. I mean, it's just different shades of brown so they didn't match. So all I told them was I wanted some kind of lace or beading on their dress and nothing satin. It can be long, it can be short, whatever you are most comfortable in. And then with their shoes, I just gave them a link to three options online and they picked which one they liked. And if they didn't want to buy those online, they went to a store and found one that were very, very similar. Because I didn't want to give them a link to a dress that they didn't look good in. I wanted them to find something they were comfortable in. I wanted them to find something they were going to be happy with. And because my bridesmaids were kind of spread out all over the southeast, they're not all like from where I'm from, I wanted to give them an availability to be able to get what they were able to get and not run into any issues and get it altered on their time. I wanted to give them the option to pick what they wanted to pick. I know that's kind of a scary idea. It had a few snafus, but 
they all look beautiful. They all look beautiful at the end of it and it looked exactly the way I wanted. So ladies, you will need a dress, you will need accessories, and you will need shoes. Men, you will need a suit or a tux or whatever, whatever fancy dress you're wearing. You'll need a shirt, you'll potentially need a tie, you'll need socks, and you'll need shoes, as well as any accessories or embellishments you're wanting to add as well. Now, what is a maid of honor? A maid of honor is someone who is the right hand of the bride. They're the person who helps the bride with whatever they need help with at any time. I'm talking SOS in the middle of the night. They're the person who helps the bride make the small and the large decisions during the engagement process. They are also the person who helps plan the bachelorette party. They are the person who helps plan any kind of pre-engagement party or any sort of bridal luncheon or bridal parties or couples parties with the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom or even just an aunt or someone who wants to celebrate the couple after they get engaged. They are also the person who carries an emergency kit on the wedding day. They are the person who helps make sure everything goes as planned on the wedding day, that everything stays fluid. Take a look at our next video next week when we talk about timeline because the maid of honor and the best man get a copy of the most extensive timeline possible. The maid of honor also helps with any kind of DIY projects the bride might have. They're also going to hold the groom's ring as well as the bride's bouquet during the wedding. They're also going to probably give a speech at the rehearsal dinner or at the reception. And they're also going to be the person who makes sure the bride eats and that they stay hydrated during the day. And you're going to be straightening the dress and straightening the veil the entire day. So make sure that you're going to make sure that the bride looks great, even for pictures or no pictures. Just make sure that the bride looks great the entire time. So if she needs to reapply her lipstick, if she needs to get her hair re kind of touched up, that that's the job of the maid of honor is pretty much to be the mirror for the bride of oh you got a little something in your teeth the whole day you need to be by the side of the bride the whole day this also goes for if the bride or the groom needs to get out of conversations and move along the the maid of honor and the best man need to be that kind of person that's like hey we need to we need to move along we need to keep this train rolling don't get stuck in one spot Let's just, oh, somebody needs you over here, or let's go talk to so-and-so and kind of pull you away from long-time conversations because y'all can catch up later. You need to just save face with everybody during the wedding. So this maid of honor, just make sure that you guys kind of keep it moving. Now, bridesmaids. Your bridesmaids are pretty much the next tier down. Anything that the maid of honor needs help with, the bridesmaids need to help with. If they need to call and delegate duties to them, hey, will you check on this? Hey, will you give a phone call to this? I just need an extra set of hands on this. Hey, we're planning a party. Can you come help set up? They are the right hand of the maid of honor. They need to also plan to attend any and all pre-wedding events, any kind of bachelorette parties, of course, as well as any sort of luncheons or engagement parties. They need to be there as often as possible. They need to be available. They need to be able to help wherever they can help. They're pretty much an assistant, sort of like a worker bee during your engagement process. Your bridesmaids really just need to be the right hand of the maid of honor and help wherever they can. Lastly, on the big day, the bridesmaids need to make sure that the guest energy stays up. They need to make sure to put out some small fires, if there's some fires during the setup and just really keep the day going and keep the night going and keep everybody just in a good mood. They need to be the, the hype team pretty much for the whole event. Now let's talk about the best man and the groomsman. The best man needs to be the right hand man of the groom. They need to be with the groom when the groom needs it. They need to help out with fittings. They need to help out with decisions. They need to help out with you know shopping for rings if that's something the groom needs help with. They need to be there for the groom. Anything that the groom needs, even if the bride has delegated duties to the groom, the best man should be able to help the groom with those duties. Just to get a second opinion or just to be you know available and supportive, but this needs to be somebody that the groom can 100% count on. This also includes if the groom's friend group is throwing a party for the couple. The best man needs to try to be there. Same with any other kind of like pre-wedding parties. The best man also organizes the bachelor party or any other sort of male driven parties that that groom needs. The best man is also going to be key in transportation. They need to make sure that the groom is able to get to 
the wedding on time and on schedule and they need to be very familiar with the timeline to make sure everything goes very smoothly and everything stays on track. The best man is also probably going to be asked to give a speech at the rehearsal dinner or at the reception or both, so make sure that they're prepared for that. The biggest, biggest task for the best man is going to be you are in charge of the marriage license. So get the marriage license before the big day, fold it up and put it in your little suit pocket, you are in charge of making sure that the wedding license gets signed and you are signing as a witness. That's your job. You also need to keep track of the bride's rings if you're not having a ring bearer. Now, after the ceremony, this is where the best man really shines. After the ceremony, after the reception, after the wedding is over, the best man needs to make sure that the gifts and the cards get to the couple after the wedding day unless it's otherwise arranged. We actually had my parents take care of it because we had our best men actually doing something else. But the best man needs to make sure that the gifts and the cards get to the couple or it's organized and coordinated so the gifts and the cards get to the couple after the wedding. Next, the best man needs to make sure that at the end of the night, after everything is said and done, even if you have a coordinator, at the end of the night, that best man needs to check in with everybody and make sure that everything was taken care of. This can include tips if you want your best man to distribute tips, if you want your parents to distribute tips, that's fine, but this is also a really great job for the best man to, you know, tip the bartenders or, you know, tip whoever you're tipping at the end of the night. So make sure to have those finances in order and delivered to your best man and make sure that he is a reliable person to take care of those duties as well. But the best man will be a really great point of contact especially in conjunction with your coordinator if you're having one of those as well, to make sure that at the end of the night you're not going to have any surprises of, well, you lost your deposit here, or this got left, or that got left. Everything is tied up. Everything is done and the night is over with because the best man will go and make sure everything's taken care of. Another great little delegation task for your best man is to make sure that all of the suits, if they're being rented, get back to the rental place. So if you're all renting tuxes and they need to be back by the next day, the best man can get those suits from the groomsmen and make sure they all get to where they need to go and get returned so that nobody has any additional fees. This includes the groom's tux. So let's talk about the groomsmen. The groomsmen, just like the bridesmaids, are going to be the right hand of the best man. They need to help out with any kind of delegation tasks. They need to help out with any kind of, you know, hey, call these people. Hey, did you get your suit? Did you get your stuff done? Is everything advancing the way it needs to advance? The groomsmen need to support the best man who supports the groom. So if the best man is not able to make it to certain things, one of the groomsmen needs to take his place to support the groom. They, like the bridesmaids, need to keep the hype up during the wedding, and they need to help with any sort of setup or takedown needs that the coordinator may need help with, as well as making sure that everybody is having a good time at the event and the event is set up and taken down in an appropriate way so that nobody gets any kind of deposit loss. They are just part of the tribe. They are the, the muscle of the tribe, if you will. And they need to be able to help the groom and help the bride and the bridesmaids out as much as possible. Everything I've mentioned in this video is not hard and fast. Pick and choose what works for you. If you're having kind of a more involved coordinator, a lot of these things with these bridesmaids and groomsmen will not need to apply, but it's a really great place to start. When you are choosing your bridesmaids and your groomsmen, your maid of honor, your best man, people's feelings are going to get hurt. So make sure to be transparent of your needs. Make sure that they understand that you're needing them to be available for you. And like I said, it's totally fine to have two best men as well as two maid of honors. Just make sure that your bridesmaids, your groomsmen, your maid of honor, your best man, that everybody understands all the decisions and everything that you're going through and lean on them for decisions that you make during your engagement process as well as your wedding day. My last tip for you guys is if you are not able to include somebody that you would really, really like to include in your wedding party, but they're not able to based on personality, accountability, finances, or availability, include them some other kind of way. Something that has a little less obligation attached to it. Have them be an usher. Have them be a parking attendant. Have them help with setup or takedown. 
Have them bring Nashi food to the bridal suite so everybody can stay fed and hydrated before the big day. Have them as an assistant on the day of to the coordinator. Have them have some sort of responsibility so they can feel included if they want to. But people's feelings sometimes are going to get hurt and it's just really hard to navigate people's emotions and feelings. So just be transparent that this this is your day. It sounds really, really selfish, but this is your day and you want to make sure that everything goes off without a hitch. So these are the choices you're making, but they are welcome to be involved in whatever way that they're willing to be involved. So that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to leave in the comments below any tips or tricks you have for your fellow brides and grooms on how to successfully choose your wedding party, your maid of honor, your best man, and all that good stuff. Make sure to tune in next week when we talk about wedding timelines, wedding timelines, wedding timelines. There's multiple, y'all. Spoiler alert. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new. Subscribe and ring the bell if you have not done so already. I'm Jane Corley with Pick Visions, Media Arts and Photography. See you later, guys.